these wildlife handling classes are so critical because we really give these students a direct hands-on, face-to-face, eye-to-eye experience as an example right here. These students are literally crawling into this box with uh, four wolves that will all be anesthetized and given their annual physical exam. And, and as you can see, they're doing the work. And it, it certainly, it's a much better learning experience than, than watching us do the same kind of thing. Uh, they take away from it um, testing themselves in a way that's different and working in a team. Uh, once the wolves are, are unconscious in this case, then all of a sudden, this is your patient. It's not just um, a big animal, it's your patient. And uh, placing a head cover and eye protection like these students are doing right here, you have to take into consideration that this guy can't even put his tongue in his mouth. So under careful instruction, because those are still jaws with the 15 to 1700 pounds per square inch, these students are going to get the tongue in a situation that it, it is safe for the wolf and for them. It does take take a little bit of a little bit of practice to keep your fingers safe. Uh, the head cover was actually designed by the Yellowstone reintroduction team, and it has two functions. It has it's a muzzle to protect the the handler. It also has an eye cover because, as you could see from that wolf, that the animals lose their ability to protect their own eyes from bright sunlight when they're under these anesthetics. Transporting unconscious wolves, which is what these students are going to do right now, is done with a weight blanket, this carrying blanket, which is, serves a couple of functions, but it also keeps the animal safe during transport. And it makes it a whole lot easier. You can have more than one person carry a very large animal rather than, rather than one person carrying a big animal. So um, it's the beginning of the teamwork process here as they're all trying to make sure they're talking and, and, and walking at the same time. Now comes the patient time. We sit back as instructors and walk these students through monitoring the, the physiology. It's not just a furry box. This animal needs to, what's the heart rate, what's the respiration, how do you take their body temperature, and what should a normal body temperature be, and how do you take a blood sample. The student here is learning how to take a blood sample out of the front leg. Um, this wolf has to go back out and be a wild wolf, so we're not going to be shaving anything. Um, and they all are responsible for their individual patients under the guidance of an instructor, but the instructor isn't doing the work. So it's a pretty neat thing. And there's man's best friend, my, my German shepherd, who thinks that it's terribly dangerous that I allow students near wolves. His ancient calling comes, comes into play when, when we're in here doing our work. So, um, and you can see all the students are hovered right closely around the wolf, and so the dog thinks that perhaps he should get me out of the situation. <laughs> and, uh, and he's shuffled to the side as we continue our important work of patient monitoring until the, such time as that wolf goes back into a pack situation.